Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back. Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Went a little bit too far there. Uh, lower it down. Right. Welcome back to Under the Hill. We are in the process of doing our silage. And then once we've done this, we are... Actually, I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing next. There are a couple of different things that I'd like to do. Um, but the most important thing, first of all, is to get this silage done. We want to get this done so that we can get the cows properly fed. And then, really, I guess it's just kind of, you know, whatever tickles our fancy. There is one job in particular that I want to do before we finish up on this map. And that is one that I have talked about previously. Um, I mentioned a little while ago that I wanted to do it. And that's um, get the, the pony. Ooh, no, hang on. No, I want to do that. And I want to do that. And then I want to pull that one forward a bit. Like that. And then unhitch it. And then we come back round and we get the trailer on. Now, sometimes people do this on their own. On their lonesome. And then other times they would have somebody else bringing the trailer out to bringing another trailer out to the field. And then you swap them over. But anyway, what we're doing is we're doing this. And we're taking it back ourselves. So, yes, I would like to get the pony out onto this map at some point and uh, want to do some uh, a few bits and pieces with that. Uh, before we go very much further, my weekly question that I asked you all last week was, did you want me to finish up our um, tenure here in FS17 doing just one single map after this one? It should take about 50 episodes, be another long series. Um, or did you want me to have a slight change of pace and do some short series instead? Because all I've done so far is long series. I haven't really done anything with short series. So I'm offering you the opportunity for um, a lot more variation on the maps and for me to do some short series instead. Uh, four weeks each. We do four different maps at four weeks or 12 episodes apiece. And then after that, we'd be moving on to FS19. I'm wondering if I can even do this. I don't know if I can. This is the joy of a really small yard in you've got to do a lot of shunting and maneuvering around sometimes in order to be able to achieve what you want. And I've worked on quite a number of small farms, so this is quite familiar sort of stuff to me, really. Um, we'll bring that one in here. Now, we should be able to tip in here. Uh... I think you just got to do the tip anywhere. Yeah, it is a silage clamp, and if we tip anywhere, it should allow us to tip in here. I don't want to I don't want to pile it up too high, but at the same time, I don't want it to be so spread out that we can't do anything with it. We get up round just fit. Look at that, it's beautiful. So anyway, yeah, I asked you if you wanted me to do one single map or if you wanted me to do a number of maps changing over every four weeks until we get roughly four maps done. We had 934 people answer that question. Now, it's been a little while since we've done a weekly question, so I just want to remind you all that I'm, I record the first episode of this each week um, before the weekend. So it's only people who really just watch the video not long after it comes out that actually get to vote. If you're watching... Um, the series over the weekend, then unfortunately your vote doesn't actually count for very much. Um, there's not really a lot else I can do about that. In order to be able to get everything recorded and make it all work, uh, this is the way that it unfortunately has to be. I've sort of thought about other ways that I might be able to get around this, but I can't, nothing really, so I can't really think of anything that I think would work very well. So at the moment we're going to stick with it like this. Um, so we've got 934 people have answered, 316 said you'd like me to do one map, and 618 said you'd like me to do a different map every four weeks. So that is what we're going to be doing, um, but twice as many of you would like me to be changing the maps over on a regular basis, so we will do that until the end. First and foremost, I was only going to do nine episodes on this map, I will now do um, more episodes on this map. Uh, 12 episodes is what I said I was going to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with four weeks on this map. So we'll do 12 episodes on this map first and then we will move on to the new one. So my weekly question this week is actually going to run for... Well, you know, I'll just do it as normal. I'm, I'm not going to try and confuse. If, if I try and do anything different, it's just going to confuse things. I'm trying to drive and try and find the correct post-it note at the same time. I do all of my filing with post-it notes, okay? It works really well until I can't find the correct post-it note and then it doesn't work quite so well. 
Um, so let me just back that up there a little bit and we lower that one down and go through there. Now, am I going to be able to get under the... I am going to be able to get under the tree. Most excellent. Okay, we'll come on around there. So I have five maps for you to choose from. Now, I would like to state that I haven't actually set foot on any of these maps apart from one. What I decided to do was I've gone, I've um, picked out the map that, um, I picked out the map choices based on two criteria. One, they had to have been suggested at some point in the last few weeks. Uh, I've had a lot of maps suggested. So all of these have been suggested by a number of you at different points. Um, and number two, they had to have a good rating on ModHub. Uh, number three, they all had to be on ModHub. Um, so that uh, everybody has got access, it, everybody's got easy access to them uh, so that you can easily follow along. I don't know if they, I don't think they're all available on console. I know some of them are, but they're not all available on console. Um, so yes, that was sort of my criteria was they had to have been suggested, they had to be on Mod Hub and they had to have a positive rating. I have gone and looked at them on ModHub. I've only looked at them on ModHub. The reason I've done this is because I don't want to influence this vote. I don't want to influence it. I want the map to be as, as much of a surprise to me as it is to a lot of you who will be uh, viewing it. So we've got, as choice number one is Stappenback17. This one looks really good. All of these have got very good ratings on ModHub. Um, all of the maps have got good ratings. Uh, so Stappenback 17, then next one is Pacific Northwest, then there's the Valley, the Old Farm, there's Horsh Aggravation Map, I have actually been on that map and I did do like a, a brief introduction, um, but that one has been since updated and there's like a lot more been done on it. And then finally there's Old Slovenian Farm, which is just up the road from this farm. So you've got five maps there to choose from. I will be using seasons on whichever map we choose. All, right? all of these maps have been uh, made ready for seasons, so there shouldn't be any issues with using seasons. I don't know what season we will go into. I will probably do three, set the season length to as short as possible, um, and then how it actually progresses, I'm not really sure at the moment. Um, there's a number of different ways that it could progress, but we'll we'll sort of wait and see. Um, uh, suggestions and also what I kind of feel like doing at the time. Um, so yeah, you've got Stappenback 17, Pacific Northwest, Valley of the Old Farm, Horsh Aggravation, and Old Slovenian Farm. I will put links to all five of them in the description down below. And then you will be able to go and take a look at them and vote for yourself. You could do just what I do and go and look at the pictures and the description on ModHub and then make up your mind from there. Or you can install them and have a look around the maps. You may know the maps. You may already be familiar with them. So however you want to um, do it, but that is the vote. You can choose whichever one you want. And that is where we will spend the next five weeks um in fs17 be one of those maps um i need to actually, i need to fold this one up don't i there I fold this one up i don't know that one trailer load is really going to be enough but we do have another field i believe that is ours that we could harvest oh no there's field 14 over there that we could harvest if i go here to growth Apparently there's a little bit there, but um, we don't actually own that. Uh, let's go back this way. So there's one field there that we could harvest. Or we could go... No, we've done our wheat field, haven't we? Um, we've got that wheat field there. We could do some whole crop on that one. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do a little bit of whole crop with this one. See what it's like um, harvesting whole crop. So we'll come up round here, and we'll we won't go onto the road with our great big long train here. We'll um, we'll stick up onto the side here, and we'll do at least well we can do at least one pass up across the field. So let me just unfold it again. There we go. Bring it on round that way like that. Now this is going to be the tricky bit: is getting this first one, this first pass up across here. I'm not sure I can even do this. No. 
It's levering it up into the sky. Oh, actually, it might just be that it's um, not suitable for this particular crop. Yeah, that's all it is. It's, it doesn't do whole crop. Okay. Whole crop is not an option. So let's um, pretend that we didn't go up there and then just bounce down over the bank. Well, I want a little bit more silage. I don't think I've got enough to be able to actually start... Um, making the silage over in the field so we're going to go up the road that way a little bit and we're going to buy another field and we're going to carry on with that now i was wondering what the story would be and i said previously that the story for us being able to do all the different things that we're going to be doing is that we are sponsored by agco and then well i'm not really sure what happened after that um I think we, we basically we've just taken a holiday that they've paid for and then after that we're going to become a farm labourer and we're going to go to different farms and um, just sort of have a look at like kind of like just travelling around and working whilst travelling so we're funding our own travels but it has been pointed out and I'm very sorry I did say that in the comment section that I thought this was an absolutely wonderfully brilliant idea and this person does deserve recognition for this one um, so hopefully I will actually remember to write their name down in my next episode so that they can get the appropriate um, recognition that they deserve um, the suggestion was that I am working still for Agco I'm not going along and doing um, separate I, I'm not going along and working for myself just as a farm laborer I'm actually working as an on-farm consultant employed by Agco that is the backstory and I love this idea because we've done we've already done a lot of stuff with Agco and so it would make a it would make perfect sense so we are going to be an on-farm consultant for Agco and this would explain why we're going to be hopping all over the world to different farms uh, doing different tasks and so on and it would also explain uh, why we're able to sort of well I say it would explain why we're able to spend so much money we don't need to worry about being able to spend money or not um, I didn't need to turn that one off I meant to just um, lift it up um, we don't need to worry about the, the whole spending money because um, you know it's, it's the farmers that are spending the money but by doing it this way we can also go to a small farm and Right, just ignore me driving on the crop here. This is the really the only way that I can spin this one round. Oh, I'm not actually driving on the... Well, sort of not driving on the crop. Um, yeah, it would also... You know, we, we can, like, occasionally get a really expensive piece of machinery that the farmer doesn't currently own because it's being supplied by Agco as, like, a demonstration vehicle or something like that. So I really, really love this idea. I love this idea for the backstory. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and this is the one that we're going to be going for. So we are going to become an on-farm consultant for Agco. I'm very curious to see where you're going to take me first. Uh, where Agco is going to take me first. Is it going to be... I think Staffenbach is in Germany. Pacific Northwest is in the US. Valley the Old Farm is somewhere in Europe. Um, Horsch Aggravation is mainland Europe. And Old Slovenian Farm is just up the road from here. Um, Valley the Old Farm is something that I've been asked to do a huge amount. A lot of people have been asking me to do that map. Um, it's the Black Sheep Modding one, I believe. The Old Slovenian Farm is also by Black Sheep Modding. I think it's not by the entire team. I think it's by some of the people in the team. It's a very small map. It's actually smaller than this one. Um, but it's done differently, so it doesn't sort of... It, by the pictures and stuff, it doesn't look smaller than this map. It looks similar to this map. It really does. Um, so it would be, again, it would be small machinery, that sort of thing. It's just done in a different style. And I really like that one. Uh, just, but I've not been on to the map, so I don't know what the map itself is like. But I, like, I do like the appearance of it that I've seen so far. Um, but saying that, I also really like um, Valley of the Old Farm. The Stappenbach one just looks absolutely exquisite. I think I'm going to struggle to really get through that map in only four weeks. Um, and uh, this is generally my issue with these maps, is that four weeks, we're going to struggle to get through them. I am going to do my best, though. I'm going to do my best to give you a good taster of each map, and then we will move on to the next one. We will only do four weeks on each one. So there's 12 episodes, starting with this one. So we've got this episode and then another five 
and the next task that I want to do on here I already said I not I don't have plans to do pigs on this map we're not going to be doing every single task on every single map that is one thing I am ruling out I'm not going to guarantee that we will do pigs and sheep and cows and all types of arable and all the rest of it on every map uh, because you don't find farms like that you do not find farms that do everything um, farms that do everything are far less common than farms that only specialize in one or two things the, you know, small farms big farms it doesn't really matter most of them do only tend to do a few things rather than lots and lots and lots of stuff um, so we will also be working along those lines so this one here it's sheep and cattle the arable stuff that we've got we do have a combine but that's kind of an aside the arable is in order to support the sheep and the cattle now I grew up on a quite a small farm and one thing about it was we did do arable it was mainly a dairy farm we had a few sheep um, although actually I think while we were milking the cows we didn't have sheep uh, it was it we, we had the cows okay so we, it was a dairy farm to start with and we had we did have some arable land but the thing is the arable land was not for the purposes of growing arable crops the arable land was there for one reason and one reason only and that was to try to be a little bit self-sufficient in straw and also to be self-sufficient in providing food for the cattle it was mostly barley and oats that was grown and that was used as grain for when you know for, for the dairy cows you know, most dairy cows when you bring them into milk you put a um a small ration of grain in for them while they're being milked uh, it's a very common practice most dairy farms do actually i don't know any dairy farm that doesn't give their cattle grain while they're milking them um and so my father's farm he used to try to be self-sufficient in the grain that he gave his cattle he would buy in some and he would blend it with uh, what he grew himself and because the machinery that he had was quite small it was actually something that was worth doing um, as far as I know as time has gone on it has become less and less worthwhile for a farmer to try to grow his own crops like that and be self-sufficient in his own grains because the price of grains comparative to you know com comparative to other costs and so on hasn't risen all that much um so buying in a few tons of grain in order to feed your cattle these days is a lot more economical than it ever used to be because of you know the increased uh, rate of mechanization and so on on farms compared to 30 years ago and it just it it makes less sense for farmers to grow their own crops if they're just doing it in order to be a little bit self-sufficient in um, these arable crops and most farmers I know that have um, a mixed farm now and have stock and arable do the arable, arable enterprise with a view to be selling the arable crops not growing them just for themselves they do actually use some of the grain for themselves but most of what they grow is now actually sold on and that's you know that that is just one of the like the, the huge changes that there is in agriculture and um i think it's i think it really it reflects a lot of the whole world i mean i was talking about this last week so i'm not gonna um go on about it too much now uh there we go right we got fifteen thousand liters i'm going to stop that one and i'm also going to fold that one up is it folding yes it is folding and we will also put that one down like that right so that is our silage i'm hoping that these two trailer loads will be enough i'm going to bring the pottinger in over here and we will unhitch over here a minute so we want to just switch over and unhitch that trailer there and then the pottinger i can just back it into this corner a minute and this is not something unusual i know many a farmer that will take a machine like this that is only used once or twice a year and they won't store it in a shed even if they've got shed space they won't store it in a shed they'll stick it outside in a corner somewhere and throw a tarp over it and then they'll leave it there and forget about it for an entire year and bring that one out and hitch that one on and then they use the sheds for other things um but i guess that makes sense because if it's got a tarp over it it's not that dissimilar to being in a shed it's not quite as good as being in a shed but it's it's close enough 
We bring this one in round here. I'm curious if we're going to be able to sheet this down with 30,000 litres in here. I'm hoping we can because otherwise we're going to have to go and get a whole load more. Now, can I bring this trailer in here? Now that I've done it once, I ought to be able to do this in one turn. I didn't like allow enough of a turn the first time I went through here. There we go. Bring that up through and then I want to tip more towards the middle of the pit so that we can keep the silage going in there. Yes, that's beautiful. It's perfect. And then I can lift that one up onto there. Now we've got to roll the pit. At the moment it's compacting at 1%, but I think that's probably going to change fairly quickly. We'll bring this one out here. Now this is going to be our heaviest tractor, so we'll use this one for doing the rolling. Come back into here and let's get this pit squished down and all ready. I'm very interested to hear what map you're going to pick this first time round. And I'm also interested to hear what other suggestions are going to come up. Um, I get asked all the time, one of the most requested maps that I haven't actually included this time, I will include it in future votes, is the... Um, the Danish one, the one that's set in Holland, it's the, the really flat one. I can't even remember what it's called at the moment. Um, but it is, it, it's an excellent map. It's dead flat. Just, well, just about dead flat. I think there's like the slightest of hills in it here and there. Um, but it's very, very realistic. It is an extremely realistic map. There's, have I it said 30,000 litres on there when I started? And it's now saying 29,200. I've lost 800 litres, I think. We're losing litres out over the side, and I don't have the camera mod, I don't think. There is a camera mod that allows you to, um, like, move stuff around. Um, so the camera will then pass through buildings and stuff, but I don't think I've actually got it active on this map, which is a little bit unusual. I thought I did. Right, compacting might take a little while, so we'll, um, we'll carry on and do this a minute. It's about as exciting doing this in game as it is doing it in real life. If you've never done the rolling of the silage pit in real life, I can honestly tell you, you haven't missed much. We're halfway. Still not very exciting. You know, I am a little bit curious about where my thousand litres of chaff has disappeared to. I think it's gone into the wall. I reckon that we must have um, neglected to repair this silage clamp properly before we started. And therefore, we've lost a whole load of stuff through cracks in the wall. I have seen this happen in real life. And, um, yeah, it's entirely our own fault. It is 100% our own fault because we didn't repair this thing properly before we started. Uh, there's not a lot that we can do about it now, though. Just need to finish uh, doing our silage here. I'm curious. Do we have any sheep on the roof? Not at the moment. They're goat sheep. We've got goat sheep here on this map. And they keep regularly climbing up onto the roof up there. I really do need to get that camera mod. Um, there is a camera mod, and it's one of it was out really early on on Mod Hub, and um, it's absolutely brilliant because the camera doesn't jump around when you go behind trees and you go into bridges and stuff like that. It cuts through all of those items instead of doing what it's doing now. Whereas we go we go in behind something, and it does that. It jumps up in front of it. Whereas if you have the camera mod, it lets the camera travel along behind these items. And sometimes it's a little bit of a nuisance, but most of the time it's actually much better to have the camera traveling along behind them. Right, that's done. Hopefully we can cover it up. Let's go here. Yes, we can. We can blanket the silo. Absolutely wonderful. That is a job well done. Let's just turn the light on so that we can have another little... Admiring look at our huge silage. Look at this. Look at this massive silage clamp. We have got loads of food in here for the cows. <laughs> um, well, we got two trailer loads. But at least it's now squashed down tight. So it should make some good silage for us. And those tyres there. <gasps> oh! Yes! Okay, we're doing this. We're definitely doing this. Um, and yes, I know when I come back into the game next time, we're not going to be able to do this. But... Every farm I've ever worked on that has done silage has covered their silage clamp with tires in order to hold everything down. There was one farm I worked on that didn't have enough tires to do their entire clamp. 
And what they did was they used silage bales on part of the clamp. Um, but almost every farmer has got a huge stack of old tyres and they use them to cover over their clamps. And I never know where they actually get them from. I've no idea where a farmer goes to get his tyres, but um, they've all got them. They've all got trailer loads of these things because they put them right the way across the clamps. I'm assuming that they just go to the local scrap man and they say, look, I want some tyres um, for my silage clamp. And the scrap man says, oh, okay, here, have some. Have as many as you want. Um, and then occasionally you'll get a scrap man who'll say, okay, yeah, you can have as many tyres as you want, they're a pound each. And the farmer says, oh, okay, keep them. And then he goes up the road and he finds someone else. Because they all know the scrap merchant has got to pay an absolute fortune to get rid of these tyres. So if he's going to try and be greedy, the farmer is um, not, not going to help him out. He's, he's, he's not going to like that at all, is he? Right, let's chuck those in there. And we get that one in there as well. This is a job I have done so many... Well, I didn't mean to do that. So many times, and I've seen all sorts of things happen when people are busy chucking these tyres around. Um, I've seen people, you know, you roll the tyre from one... You know, if, you're, if you've got like a big stack, you roll the tyre towards the clamp. If you're lucky, um, the um, stack of tyres is actually like higher than the level of the clamp, and so then you can just roll them all from the top. It makes life so much easier rather than having to um, throw them all uphill. But then when you're rolling them downhill, if people aren't on their toes and watching what they're doing, they can get hit by a moving tyre, and it's um, it's never good. Right, we'll put that one in there, and we'll put some more over here. So this is absolutely brilliant. This map, I've all, I was already really enjoying this map. It has now gone up by several notches of excellence, in my opinion, because of the tyres. The tyres are the bit that has made this for me. This is absolutely wonderful. I really do love this. Um, I've been getting suggestions, by the way, for other things that I should be doing or machines I should be using in order to uh, keep authenticity on a Slovenian map. One thing in particular, Steyr. If we want a new tractor, um, Valtra is not very common over here. Valtra is more a Scandinavian brand, and you do see it other places in the world, but it is, pr um, you know, its, it's home world is in Scandinavia. Slovenia down here, Steyr is apparently one of the big brands, um, but New Holland does also have quite a big showing here in Slovenia. Um, right. There we go. We now have that one done. I, hang on. I just, I just want to go a little bit. I, I want to, I want to have a look at this. I want to. Can I go up here and do it? I want, I want to have a, a good look at this. There we go. Look at that. There is our silage clamp, complete with tires. We've actually done it. And yeah, I'm, I'm just getting myself a screenshot here. Um, let me just do that. There. That's a better screenshot. Right. Now you will have already seen that. Oops. I didn't mean to do that too many times. There. Okay. Now we can carry on. So, if we're going to do, we, we, we want to do another job now. We want to do something else. We need to do something to sort of while away the time. Uh, base food for cows. Now, this is a problem. We don't have lots of food in for the cows. We've got some food in for the cows. We've, we've got some food in for the sheep, and we've got some food in for the cows, but we don't have lots. We also don't have lots of grass in for the cows either, so we could probably do with giving them a little bit more food. Um... Not too concerned about it at the moment, though, so I'm just trying to think what job I should do. There, are, There's a couple of jobs I'd like to do. One is I'd like to do a bit of muck spreading, actually. Um, and I do want to buy, I want to buy a new tractor. But no, most important of all, there is one other job that I wanted to do. And actually, I've got to check and make sure that I even have the mod on here. Pretty sure I've got it active. Uh course I need to actually find the mod I, I I could have sworn that I had this mod active but the problem is I don't remember what section it was in it's not under tractors surely it's, n it's never under tractors it maybe it is uh, it's the pony I want the pony but I'm not quite sure where the pony actually is and this is a problem for me Right, we're going to have to do the pony in tomorrow's episode because I have forgotten to make sure that the pony is active. Um, that I haven't actually put a little tick next to that mod. So, my bad. I should have done that. I will do that for... Oh, unless it's in animals. 
Oh, we got the pony. We've, we've already got the pony. This is okay. Right, so we want to buy the pony. We can have a brown, we can have a black, we can have a red brown or a brown. We've gone through all the colors that we've seen. I like the red brown, so we're going to buy that one right there. Selection is being purchased. Okay. And then we're going to buy the wooden cart. We've got only platform and standard. Okay, so we'll buy that one there. And we'll also buy only platform there so that we can take a look at them. And we can come out of there. So we need pony feed there. I'll buy two of those like that. And we want um, to buy a bale of hay. I'm going to buy two of those. And we can compare those to the bales of hay that we've got. Oh, these are 200 litres, whereas the ones that we've made are 468 litres, I believe. I think they're 468 litres. Right, so we've got a water bucket there. I'm just going to get one of those. Then we've got a hay rack. Oh, this is placeable. This, this this one we 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 gotta place this baby uh, baby this this bad boy not baby um we we gotta place this bad boy down somewhere now I'm thinking somewhere around this bit here would be suitable for placing a rack but there's like the, the pony can wander I do know people that keep ponies um and they never bother locking them up they they just kind of they wander around and they stay near the farm and they, they don't tend to go very far um. Although that is, like, the exception to the rule, I would say. Not the, not the actual way that most people keep their ponies. So where are we going to put a pony? I don't know if we've got... I don't think there is, like, a fence mod or anything like that for horses. Uh, we could put it out here somewhere. Let's bring it back towards the farm a bit. And we're going to assume that this pony is a, a good little pony. But we're also going to assume that the pony... They can use this bit here for shelter. So what we'll do is let's just zoom in here a little bit and we can rotate this one round. I don't think it matters which way it goes. It's going to go there like that. And then we're going to go and we're going to get that one, water drinker. I'm going to bring that one over here and we're going to put that one over there somewhere. Cannot be placed here. I guess it's too close to the... All right, let's let's move. I'll tell you what, we'll move that one round and we'll put it over like that. And then it can go on that end of it. That one can go there. Okay. What else we got? That's that's all we got. So we got one water bucket. I'm, I'm going to get another water bucket. I'll get one more of those. I'm going to come out of there. Right. Uh, we could drive up towards the shop, but on the other hand, I don't want to. So we're not going to. Uh, we're going to go and I'm just going to do that. There we go. We have our pony. Let's just let's have a look first. So we do have straps. We can put straps on here. Uh, we got one on there, and there is our bale of hay. So if I put the bale of hay in there like that, and then I put that bale of hay in there as well, put that in there, so that we got food, and there is some water. I just wanted to look at the like. Uh, com Ooh, okay, the, the the bucket of water being upside down is is, is probably not the, the best way to do this. Let's bring it round that way, and then if I drop it there, is no, it's still upside down. Right. Um, hmm. Turning this the right way up is not really something that looks like it's going to happen very easily. So let's try this again. This time we'll do it like that. Hmm. We have magic. We 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 got lids on the buckets. Okay. We we've got lids on the buckets. Do not question it. That. Hmm. Um. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing very well at this, am I? Okay. Pony feed. There. We've got lids on the buckets, and we've got some pony feed going in here as well. And we put that one in. There we go. Now we're talking. Right. That one there, I'm going to sell that one. That one. That one's going to go immediately. We're going to go back there. I just wanted to have a look, see what it looked like. So let's go garage. And then we can scoot through here and... Oh. Uh, problem. El problemo. I wonder if I can reach it from here. Is that going to be... That's not going to be close enough, is it? Uh, nope. Right. Can I pick this one up? No, I can't do that either. Okay, I'm going to... Let's go to the pony a minute. Now, you, you can just drive this one like you can normal, um, a normal tractor. I'm driving this one using my um, steering wheel. So I can back him up like this. There. And then hitch it up. Okay, that is actually pretty cool. That is actually very, very cool. And then we can bring it over here. Right, so he he sort of walks sideways a bit as he comes through there. There, and drop that one down. Yep, there we go. 
And he can come over there and we will stop there like that a minute. And I'll sell this one now. Here we go. That one can sell for 268 euros. An absolute fortune. And then we can come back over here. Oh, hang on. No, I want to put the straps on on here first. We don't want these getting away. We don't want these bad boys getting away. So we'll put... There's one. There's another. And another. Should be one more. There we go. Now, th those buckets have got lids on, okay? Do not question the buckets have got lids on. That's all you need to know. So, fuel and water for the horse is obviously the food and the water that we've got in the back there. Um... I don't know how hay and w what the pony feed does, because we've got, like, the, the hay and the water here. So you're going to back the horse into the bars of the pony trap, like that. There we go. And then it can back up a bit. And go like that. And we come round. Ah, I see. So it, it does a slow trot. And also... It doesn't have a really massive, uh, like a really sh short turning circle. Oh, and when you're turning the corner, it also does a little, it like behaves in a slightly different fashion as well. I'm going to bring that one to there. And I'm going to just unhitch it a second. Because I want the horse to go for a little run. We're, we're going to go for a run first. Wild and free through the meadows. That's us. There we go. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. And I know I did use this one a bit in the Estancia Lapacho map, but um, I don't know. Galloping around a pony seems to fit really well with this particular map. I, I quite like this. Um, I will point out that I am not a horse person at all. I am definitely not a horse person. Horses can tell, right? They know straight away. They've only got to just look at you, and they know if you have any kind of affinity with them whatsoever. I do not. I have zero affinity with horses in any way, shape, or form, and they know this, right? They know this immediately, they can tell, and they say, ah, oh, yeah, look at him, inexperienced, he doesn't have a clue what he's doing, and, yeah, the, the horses like me about as much as I like them, which isn't a great deal. So, I'm not a horse person at all. That being said, I can still really, really appreciate this mod. This is absolutely brilliant. I love the movement on this. I think this is absolutely awesome. It is a lot of fun. Um, let me just bring this back onto here a minute. And Well, first of all, let's just take a look at any options. We've got cruise control speed, serve out. Okay, I have no idea what serve out means. I don't really want to press E at the moment because I'm scared that something's going to happen. Um, activate cruise control, turn GPS, nay, uh, which is nay, is that that one? Nice. <laughs> Brilliant, right, what is serve out? I've no idea. I'm going to do it, I'm going to pray this may crash the game completely. Oh, serve out is apparently dismount. Of course, yeah, E. Yeah, that's how you get out of your tractor, isn't it? Right, okay. I didn't think that through. Not not really. Not 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 all the way through. Right, anyway, that is all we've got time for today. So we will carry on with this tomorrow and we will take our pony and trap all the way back to the farm and we will get the pony set up. I will also try to make sure that I've got that other the, the camera mod installed and we're going to get a stayer tractor. I want to get a stayer for this little map. Um, we may even get a big stayer and get a, like a front mounted mower or something like that and get a decent quantity of grass in for the cows. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know. There are many, many options that we can pick from. I'm curious to see what map you're going to pick. We have five maps for you to pick from. It's Stepan, uh, Stappenback 17, Pacific Northwest, Valley of the Old Farm, Horsch Aggravation or Old Slovenian Farm. It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me, get them to come and watch as well, that would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching, this is Frithgar, goodbye, and see you later.